Howdy folks, welcome back to Duke Fraser Productions. Just thought I'd come to you with a little quick fun video here. Um, pretty nice out here today, but it's really hot in my back room. If I turn the fan on, we can't record and get any decent sound, so we're out here today. Uh, but real recently, uh, um, Dustin Weiniger put out a video on Hollywood guns, and I thought about doing something like that. I just, I'd never done it, but uh, anyway, one of the cool things I've seen in his video is when he talks about with the Magnificent Seven and how Denzel Washington's character unloads his single action army by holding it straight up, opening the loading gate, and just turns the cylinder, and the shells fall out. And as Destin pointed out, there was a few problems with that. So I thought I'd do a little quick video here and give you a demonstration. So I've got some uh, fired rounds here, and we'll load this up, and just so you can see, they are fired, there is no bullet in them. All right, so got this one loaded up with some empty shells that have been fired. And so what his character does, as I said, is he takes his gun, puts it on the half cock to unload it, and then he just turns the cylinder. And I have to put my finger on the trigger guard to do this to get this to balance right. But he just turns the cylinder, and the shells fall out. Now I've turned this cylinder around about three times, four times so, and uh, all that fell out was one shell. That was it. So that doesn't work all that well. So when you unload these, like I said, you usually can't turn them up. Every once in a while, they'll turn up and dump out like that for you, uh, but not always. And that's why they've got an ejector rod below the barrel on here. So you turn it, get things lined up, and you push on the ejector rod, and the shell falls three, free. And I should have thought about this before, but I'm out here on my lawn, so finding these shells might be a pain here in a little bit. Now in theory, you could do that with live ammo. Now I have some dummies here. You can see the firing pin has been struck. I just took some empty shells and stuck some slugs in them for this. And uh, we'll load this up here. All right, so I've got five rounds in there and then again, I've got to stick my finger in the trigger guard to do this because I can't really hold the gun up right uh, if I don't. So you place the gun on half cock and there one fell out. Now I'm going to spin this as fast as I can and see I've already got it jammed up. There's a shell that fell down in there uh, in the cutout for the loading gate. If you do it slow, it'll work, but if you do it fast like that, I've done this about 10, 15 times now, it just doesn't work. All right, so I'm going to pick up those shells and then we'll give you some close-ups here. All right, so I've got the empties loaded up in here and uh, I'll try to do this and try to get it on camera. But it brings the gun to half cock, and that's what lets the cylinder turn. And then he takes his thumb and he whacks it. It's kind of hard to see with my thumb in the way. Um, but you see, I've got one shell that tried to fall out there. And nothing else is coming. Just that one shell. It doesn't work. All right, so now we're going to do the dummies. And just so you can see, things will focus. It has been fired. And it's got a slug. Like I said, I just loaded these up to do this little test with. I had some dummy rounds laying around, and I think I might have either taken them apart or they got stuck somewhere else, because I can't find them. I got so much brass laying around, it's not even funny for 4440. I've probably got close to a thousand rounds of 4440 brass. Some of it's never been fired, some of it's only been fired once, and I just haven't done anything with it yet. We got her loaded up with the dummy rounds. And I'm going to break the half cock. There's one dropped out. Now, unfortunately, i got to put my thumb in the trigger guard to do this. But just turn the thing and see how I already turned it past where it goes. See, it wants to bind up. You can't do it real fast. They just don't fall out fast enough to do that. So I think it's safe to say that little Hollywood show thing there is pretty well debunked. So while we're talking about Hollywood stuff, we're going to go over a couple extra things here. So one of the things you see a lot in the movies, um, especially old westerns, is fan firing. And what fan firing is, you hold the trigger down and you fan your hand across the hammer. They do this in all kinds of westerns and you see a lot of people now doing it um, with their own guns. And that can be very uh, damaging to a gun. You can easily screw it up. They're designed to be cocked by the thumb at about that speed. I mean, you could go faster. You could really rack them. What can happen is the cylinder will over-rotate. Um, 
and then your firing pin is going to hit the, the rim of the cartridge or it's going to hit the cylinder itself and that can break your firing pin. Uh, but that's what they're designed for. They're designed to be shot and fired like this. Now if you're a big fan of the older westerns, just like I am, you've probably seen A Fistful of Dollars. And there at the end scene, um, when Clint Eastwood is facing off with the one bandit there, and I can't remember what his name was, Ramon or something like that. Anyway, last scene, he unloads his gun, throws it in the dirt, and him and Ramon have one bullet and they go over their guns and they load them. And what you see Clint Eastwood do is you see him drop the round in, spin the cylinder, and cock it. And I'll be damned if I didn't get the, uh, I got the round to line up right into the firing pin when I did that. That's, that's the first time I've done it when I was practicing with this before we did the video. On this particular model of Uberti that I have here, spinning a cylinder isn't going to damage it that much. It is going to do some wear on it, but it's not going to damage it as much. And that's because this gun has a plunger system in it. So instead of having the spring built right into the hand, there's a little bitty um, spring and a little plunger pin that go in through the back of the frame into the slot for the hand to go through and that's what keeps the tension on the hand. And this is called the quick draw model and it's supposed to keep that part from breaking out because when you're doing the quick draw and you're fanning these guns and you're spinning the cylinders on them, that will kill those springs faster than anything. Now I'm going to do this again and I'm going to do it a lot faster without explaining it. And when I did that, the round turned over. <laughs> it's way back here. I just got lucky on that one time and it fell under the firing pin. And it didn't line up. So that's another Hollywood myth debunked there. You'd have to have extremely fast reflexes to be able to know when that it's gonna turn under there. You're, you're depending more on luck than anything. It's basically what I'm, I'm attempting to tell you here is that in the movies and stuff, when they're doing the fan firing and when they're spilling, spinning the cylinders, you don't want to do that with a traditional style stock gun. You're going to damage it. You're going to have problems. Um, take a chance of breaking the firing pin, damaging the bolt, uh, peening out the stops on the cylinder for the bolt to engage, uh, breaking springs. Uh, these aren't designed straight out of the factory to have those things done to it. Now, if you want to do that with your gun, uh, you need to make some modifications. This was what I was trying to show you earlier. And you cock these things real fast. And <clears throat> the one they're not designed to do that, like when you're fan firing, sometimes the cylinder gets out of line, does not line up right. And when you fire, your firing pin is going to hit the rim of your case, uh, and you take a chance of breaking your firing pin. This right now is not in battery, because watch when I push my thumb on it. See the cylinder turned and everything was locked up. So that's why you don't want to, to fan your gun. I don't know if I can get this to do it again or not. Probably not. There it went. So there, it's out of battery. Hammer's down, everything should be locked up. And I can turn the cylinder. And dog had to go bark at the cats. She's always barking at cats. Dolly, knock it off. Hey! Dumb dog. She knows she's in trouble for barking at the cats. She's trying to lay down and behave and act like uh, she hasn't done anything. She hasn't figured out yet that I can hear her barking. Dumb dog. All right, folks, that's gonna take care of it today for our little Hollywood debunking on the single action army style guns. Uh, if you liked what you see on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down there below. Uh, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Patreon. Links to that are down there in the description box. And as always, be sure to stay tuned and keep your powder dry.